welcome to Career Conversations with Amanda. I am with Haley today from RSM, and we're going to be talking about how students can tell their unique story in an interview in order to be remembered. So welcome, Haley, if you want to introduce yourself in RSM. Hi, everyone. I'm Haley Thomas. I'm a senior campus recruiter with RSM. I'm based out of our Atlanta office, and I cover all of our campus recruiting efforts for Atlanta, Birmingham, and Nashville offices for the firm. Um, I've been with RSM about two and a half years in the space. Um, RSM is a professional services firm, so we offer audit, tax, and consulting services to the middle market globally. We have offices in every major city, um, and if you haven't heard of us, we are the fifth largest public accounting firm. So happy to be here today. Thanks, Amanda. Great. Thank you. Uh, so let's jump into it. What do we mean by unique stories? Yeah, so when I think of unique stories, I think of what is something that the student or candidate can say in an interview that's going to help them stand out or help them uh, be memorable to that interview team. Oftentimes, interviewers are talking to a lot of students, a lot of candidates over the course of the interview season. So what's something a candidate can do that can just really help them stand out? Cool. Yeah. So how do we share information about ourselves that sets us apart from others? Sometimes that can look difficult. Well, I might, you know, not think that I'm very interesting, but how do I, how do I set myself apart? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, this is kind of a loaded question because there's a lot that can go into it. Absolutely. Um, and, then, and when you asked me to uh, talk about this topic, really my brain kind of went to what are the most common interview questions that I see students stumble on or maybe um, fail or have a hard time answering? So I figured we could answer maybe a couple of those questions today. And what are some answers or responses you can prepare to not only help set you up for success in the interview, but also make you stand out? Great. So the first one, tell me about yourself. <laughs> That's one of the hardest questions to answer. And I think a lot of students, um, it can lend itself to them rambling during the interview, right? Do I answer it in three minutes? Do I answer it in 30 seconds? Um, so I think one way you can kind of tackle that question is to come up with a three-part response. And I will say, this is not my motto. This is something that I stole from um, somebody on TikTok that I've been following. He is ex-admissions for Stanford University. So although a lot of his tips apply to college admissions interviews, I think they also can apply to any entry-level position interview. Um, so tell me about yourself. Set it up in kind of this three-part response. And really that is, hey, interviewer, there's three things that I want you to know about me, right? So what that does is it keeps you organized in your brain. Okay, I have three things that I'm going to talk about, but it also intrigues the interviewer. Oh, okay, what are the three things that they're going to tell me? How you want to respond that, to that question or to that response is, what is the overall question we want to answer? And that's truly, what do companies look for in an incoming intern or an associate? Oftentimes, they want to know that an incoming intern or an associate is a team player, right, can work well in teams, can work well with others to get things done. Number two is had leadership experience or opportunities where they've led a project or a team. And then number three is that they're a lifelong learner. They're curious, they ask questions, and they can learn on the job. So as you're thinking about your response to that question, hey, here are three things I want you to know about me. Tie it back to being a team player, having leadership opportunities, whether it's on campus, in a job, in a project. And the third thing is just being that lifelong learner, being curious, being willing to learn, because you're not going to know the job when you start, but they want to know that you have that capability. Cool. Awesome. So that was question number one. <laughs> question number two, um, and this is something I personally like to ask students in an interview process to get to know them a little bit better, is tell me something that you're passionate about, or tell me about one of your hobbies outside of school. And, and what I'll say here is most interviews at the campus level are behavioral based interviews. Yeah. So a lot of the questions are gonna be, you know, tell me about working in a team or tell me about solving a problem, or tell me about overcoming challenges in situations like that. 
But oftentimes, towards the end of the interview, the beginning of the interview, the interviewer is going to want to know more about you as a person, and they're at, they will ask more directly about something you're passionate about, your hobbies, and so forth. And I think the key here is to be truly just honest, yep. right? So if you are passionate about running, that's great. Tell the interviewer how and why you started running. How did you get into it? Um, maybe there's a big race coming up that you're um, attending and how are you prepping for that race? Um, so this is an an awesome opportunity for you to share something that's unique about yourself that will just make that interviewer remember you and make you a little bit more memorable at the end of the day. I think that helps too with like how people might fit into a culture of the company. Um, so you're not just, okay, I can do this or I want to learn um, about this type of accounting or this process or whatever that is. It's really saying that, you know, I want to be invested in the company and, and really connect with my coworkers and things like that. So that's good that you, you mentioned that. Cause I, I don't, I don't know, I feel like that question hasn't come up a lot until recent years. Um, so that's, it's good to, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. I, I love that question. And, um, Sometimes it catches students a little bit off guard, which I think is a good thing because I, I truly want a, an honest and truthful answer. And I want to get a little glimpse into what that student's life looks like outside of the professional world. Um, I also think it lets employers know that a student is well-rounded yeah. um, and they bring a lot to the table outside of the specific skill sets maybe they've learned from school or academics. So I, I love that one. Yeah. All right, and then the last question. I think this question is, is also sometimes a loaded question and it's why should we hire you? What differentiates you from any other candidate? What do you bring to the table, right? And I think the three things you can address here kind of similar to that first question is having that kind of three part answer. One is employers wanna know that you're competent, that you can do the job. Right? I have the skill sets necessary to learn and complete this job. Number two is that you're caring, right? Not only can I do this job, but I care about this job and I care about doing well in the job. And then I think the third thing kind of goes back to, to that question number one, and that's just being a team player. Not only can I do the job, not only do I care about doing well on the job, but I'm also somebody that you will want to work with on the job. So as you're thinking about kind of crafting your response, why should we hire you? Think about those three things, right? For competency, what are some skill sets you've learned in your career that will lend itself to the job? So for public accounting, for example, you're a client server. Your job is to connect with your client, understand their business problems and help them solve. So as you're thinking about what skill sets you have, do you have any customer service experience, right? If, have you been a server or a waiter where you've had to do that, right? Those are some easy examples to say, hey, I've exemplified these skill sets in the past and this is how it translates. Um, so I think just thinking of kind of that three-part answer can help as you're thinking about, oh, why, why should I be hired for this job? Right. And it, like you said, you're not rambling, you have a concise answer, but you're also still providing the employer um, or the interviewer with who we are as a person, like who, who am I, um, but also, you know, not having to stumble and things like that. And I think that um, you can prepare without sort of sounding like a robot when you repeat it back. It's, it can still be like a conversation, but at least you have some sort of idea of, you know, what, what can I expect if someone asks me that question? Absolutely. Definitely don't want to sound rehearsed, um, but I think going in with some sort of game plan or action plan will help set you up for success, make you feel a little bit more comfortable. And again, kind of going back to what makes you memorable and stand out in the interview process. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so any last advice or thoughts? I know we talked about um, a lot of those, you know, behavioral questions and things like that. Is there anything else that you can think of that might be something that we could share about how to be remembered in an interview? Sure. I, I think um, 
I think oftentimes there are sometimes students who are remembered not in the best way. Um, and typically it's a student who doesn't ask questions at the end of the interview. And I know that's like interview 101 and you hear that from your university, from career services as you're prepping for the interview process. But that is such an easy way to show the interview team that you're prepared, that you care about the job, that you're interested, and that also you wanna know a little bit more about the company or the interviewer. So my recommendation is always to come into that interview process with maybe two to four questions um, that are relative to the job, the company, or the interviewer to show that you are interested and that you have a stake in the game uh, for the interview process. I think the students that don't come prepared with those questions may come across as disinterested or maybe not as engaged during the interview process and sometimes can stand out in more of a negative way than a positive. So that I like would be that, my two cents. <laughs> yeah, I like that you said two to four questions because I've been in interviews personally where, um, you know, the interview has gone really well and we've talked about a lot of different things about the firm, about me. Um, and then I get to a point where I'm like, oh, all my questions that I had have been answered. What do I do? Um, and so so preparing a few more um, that you might not necessarily ask, but you still have that ability to say, okay, oh no, my first three questions that I really wanted to ask have already been answered in the interview. Well, I still have these two or three that would be good information for me to know, but hadn't been on the top of my priority. It still shows that you're engaged, um, but that you're not leaving the interviewer empty-handed without being able to provide more information. Totally. <laughs> yeah. totally. And I think to interviewers want to talk about their job and themselves. So if you get stuck, all my questions have been answered. This is my third interview and I've already talked, you know, up and down about the firm or the company that I'm interviewing with. Ask the interviewer about themselves and their career path and why they stay at the company they're in and that kind of stuff. I think that will go a long way um, in the interview process as well. Yeah, great. Well, thank you so much for talking with us today. Thank you for having me. So good to see you guys. See ya.